Hey, what's up guys? Pablo Munoz here. Welcome back to this mini workshop on the Adobe 3 Tools in Action. So in the previous video, we went through the process of blending materials in Substance 3D Painter uh, using some of the base materials that we created in 3D Sampler. So in this final video of this workshop, we're going to take everything that we've been creating and all the textures and materials and everything that we applied to the, uh, to the meshes, and we're going to create a 3D scene for rendering inside Substance 3D Stager. So let's go ahead and jump straight into it. All right, so here we are in Substance 3D Painter and we are ready to move on into 3D Stager to create a nice render and a nice composition for our objects. Now, before I move into that uh, rendering stage, I just wanna show you that you can actually render from uh, within Substance 3D Painter. All you have to do is click on this icon and then you will be able to do an eye render. So let's just do that very quickly. All right, so that is rendering already and you have a pretty decent result straight away all within Substance 3D Painter. So what I'm gonna do is change the background. So let me go ahead and pause the eye rendering. Uh, I'm gonna click on the display properties and I'm gonna go to this dome and I'm gonna click on clear color and I'm gonna leave it as, as it is right now. And let's go ahead and unpause the eye rendering. And now we have a, a pretty decent result. So now we can hold the shift key and right click to rotate the, the lighting around. And the only thing is that these objects have the, the pivot point somewhere else, so they're not kind of like touching the ground. Uh, but other than that, you have a pretty decent result just by enabling iRay in Substance 3D Painter. So you don't have to use Stager. Um, however, it gives you a much better quality. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this icon again. Just wanted to show you, you can do that from Painter. So we go back to the kind of like painting texturing mode. Um, by the way, you can also go to the display properties in case um, you're not familiar with 3D Painter as much, uh, you can turn on the shadows in here and right click and, sorry, holding shift and right click and moving the, rotating the environment around. So you can move and rotate the shadows and see how they're reacting with the materials you're creating, which is pretty cool. I'm gonna turn that off. And now the point is that we created all the materials in 3D Sampler and we brought them with just a simple click into 3D Painter. And now what I'm gonna do is one single click operation and send everything to 3D Stager. So I'm gonna go to File, and I'm gonna click on Send To, and I'm gonna click on Send to Substance 3D Stager. So as soon as I do that, Substance 3D Painter is gonna start exporting every single asset that I have in here with all the texture set applies to it. And um, it's just gonna display exactly what we see here, but in 3D Stager. All right, so here is 3D Stager loading up. There we go, it just takes a few seconds. Let me go into full screen here. And we have all the assets. So the first thing I wanna do is just take this, um, this arrow, this manipulator and push things up. Um, and one of my favorite things about, uh, you know, this 3D Stager is that you can snap things to different things. So by default, it's a snapping to the ground. So if I click and drag, you'll see it will snap at some point. If I keep going down there, it just sort of snaps to the ground. So I know this is touching the ground now. Great, and you can move and rotate things exactly in, in the way that you do in 3D Substance 3D Painter. But that's pretty much it, right? Like we have done a full circle. We started with 3D Sampler uh, from simple photos and, and images creating materials. Then we apply them in 3D Painter and now we're gonna use 3D Stager to, um, to do a nice render. Now 3D Stager is fantastic. It's a pretty simple and powerful tool uh, to render and the, the learning curve is, is non-existent really. So all I have to do now that I brought everything from one single click from Painter, I'm gonna click on Ray Trace and that's it. We now have a super nice looking render and I can hold the Shift key and right click the same way that I've done with the other applications to rotate the, the lighting source. And of course we can make this a lot better, which is exactly what we're gonna be doing. But I just wanted to show you that with a single click, you can send all your assets to 3D Stager and turn on ray tracing and boom, you have, um, you have a nice render. All right, so I'm gonna turn that off just to work a little bit faster. And let's go ahead and set up the scene, which is just a matter of moving those assets. So I'm gonna click on this one, on the, on the bowl. And you see we have a folder with has, uh, that has the four uh, texture sets, so the four um, meshes. So I'm just gonna push this one closer here. Maybe select the jog and rotate it using these manipulators. Nothing too complicated. Select the glass and move it around. 
Um, actually, if you select the, the little icon or the little dot right in the middle, this is kind of like the way that you can snap things to other things. So if I do that, it's just going to always snap to like, you know, either other surfaces like this, <laughs> which is, you know, it's quite cool. You can make sure that it matches or um, this is sticking to a specific normal or you can just drag it into the yeah, into the floor. So that's that's one thing. And I think I'm just going to push this one back. I can spend a lot of time just finding <laughs> finding the, the right placement and the right framing for this. But again, we're going to try to keep it simple. All right, so I'm going to take this uh, bowl and I can duplicate it. So I'm going to take that bowl and I can duplicate it. So Control D to duplicate. And I can push that up, right? And I can also maybe rotate it, rotate it a little bit like so. And, and that's it. And we can use this dot, like I said, and maybe fit it somewhere in here. And push that up as well. I just want to create something a bit more interesting in terms of the of the placement of this. All right. Um, if you find it hard to sort of like match this, I don't know. I don't know why I was wasting time with this. But you can select this, and if you go to the transform, you can change from the pivot uh, from bottom to let's say center, right? And now this is going to be in the center of the volume, uh, and you can scale things as well. So. So you can check the, the constraint proportions and set it to 0.9, just slightly, maybe point, let's go for 0.95, just so that it's a little bit easier and we don't waste time just on this, this setup. It's kind of like a small bowl into, like a smaller bowl into a larger bowl. And we can duplicate that one more time and do the same thing. So I'm going to go for 0.8, maybe that's too much. Point, point 0.9 and again rotate around just trying to get a, a more interesting read of these shapes all right so that's that's looking a lot better <laughs> so you can spend as much time um, as you want just setting it up but it's just a matter of moving things around um, the the cool thing about this whole setup is just that dot that I just mentioned that icon that allows you to um, to move things around the normal of different objects. Uh, so it's pretty cool, just play around with that. All right, so in terms of the background, you can use a photograph if you want something a bit more interesting. Uh, I'm just gonna keep it simple. So in 3D Stager, if you go to the asset library, you can select the objects right here. And we can go ahead and select something like this cloth uh, blanket. So I can drag and drop this in there. And there we go, we can sort of place this and scale it so that uh, it matches what we want. So Let's go for 0.2. We can rotate things around, and of course we can adjust the you know the placement of this of this asset so there's no intersection and, and that sort of thing. But uh, I just wanted to show you you can use anything you want. Uh, I'm gonna hide this. That's not the one I want to use. I want to use something more interesting, maybe like a table. So I want to drop the table in there, and it's a little bit. A little bit big so i'm going to take the entire folder with all my assets i'm going to drop that or push that up oops push that up and let's go ahead and scale everything to maybe three times four times and remember i'm just selecting the entire folder and i'm scaling the whole thing um, and again using that sort of pivot i can just make sure that whatever i move is kind of like part of this table all right so that's gonna be my my setup, and I'm gonna take the table, maybe rotate it 90 degrees. And of course, the table doesn't. We haven't um, textured the table or anything, um, so we can use some of the the materials that come with 3D Stager. So let's go for something very very simple, like I think this one would be would be fine. Let's just drag and drop that in there. Nope, that's actually not what I wanted. Let's just type wood. All right, so we have two types of wood. We have pine wood and oak. I think oak. Let's drop that in there. Cool. That's pretty much it. And it's looking pretty decent, actually. All right, so now we can go ahead and turn on ray tracing to have a, a snippet or a preview of this whole scene. Rotate the lighting around. And that's pretty awesome, right? That's pretty convincing. And there are a bunch of other things that we can do too. Keep improving this but we have the you know all the details from the texture and the materials that we've created the you know the roughness variation everything is coming through 
really nicely. Uh, so let's turn this off again. I want to select the yog. I think when I just rotate it around. I prefer to see more of that um, that area in there. Yeah, I think something like that. And now the next thing, once we have set up the the placement of these objects and added any other additional object that you might want. Um, again, there's a bunch of things. I'm gonna keep it simple, but you can, you know, play around with, you know, adding a, I don't know, like a, like a palm tree or something. So you can do anything that you want in that. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is set up the camera and set up the lighting and then set up the render. So I'm gonna click on new camera. And that immediately sends me to the camera, the new camera, and it just sort of frames the whole thing. So I think I'm gonna go for a wide shot anyway. So that's fine. And because I'm within the camera or inside the camera, I can keep moving and that's the way that I can frame and place the camera. So I'm gonna go for something like this. Um, and we can play as well with the, the depth of field and the focal length. So if I want a flatter perspective, I can push this focal length because I have the camera selected to 100 milli millimeters. So I think I think that can, kind of works. <laughs> Um, and if I wanted to have like a, a variation of that camera, all I have to do is click on new camera and that sends me to a new camera as well. And we can do maybe like a shot from the top. I don't know how good that would look anyway, but maybe like an angle shot. Uh, change the focal length a bit. Just a different one, right? And you can click on these dots to switch between this camera or this camera, or if you click on the on the one that you have selected, you just go out into the into the view, viewport camera, right? Which is pretty cool. So whenever you wanna go into a camera, you can select it and click on this dot and it sends you to the camera. All right, so now from this camera that I kind of like, I'm gonna enable ray tracing. And, and you can forget about the background, as in you won't see that in the final render anyway, uh, but I can rotate the light around See if I can find something interesting with nice reflections, especially to bring back uh, some of the, you know, all the work that we did in the in the roughness in the custom roughness of the of the jog. But I think this one looks quite nice. Um, but this is just one type of lighting. So if we go to the lighting setup here in the assets of 3D 3D Stager, we can drag and drop different lights to customize the lighting or entire environment stages um, or just lights. Right, so right now, if I go to environment, if I select the environment and I click on lights, um, this is the one that we've been using. But I can go ahead and make something a bit more interesting. Let's uh, let's click on maybe this warm key or warm key light and cool fill. So I'm gonna click on that one and drag and drop it, and that obviously changes things immediately. And I can rotate things around and try to find something that that I like. Right, so I'm gonna try a few of these ones. This is a process that kind of like, at least for me, it takes time just finding the right lighting and the right position of the light, because this is a process that can make or break your entire, uh, all the work that you've done. Um, so let's bring in this wood studio. So that could be a nice product presentation. And depending on which one you select, it will have like sharper shadows, um, you know, more contrasted shadows. You put something like in the studio, let's go for, let's do this one. This one is a couple of soft lights. Um, you know, the, the shadows are a little bit softer than, than the one before. All right, I think overall, the one that I liked is the Tomoko Studio anyway. Um, that's kind of like my, my safe place. I like this, you know, the balance of the, of the key light and the, and the fill lights, but you can add as many lights as you want. So I can start with something like this. Let's get out of the camera by clicking on the dot. And I can let's turn off ray tracing as well. Um, let's go to the top and select a spotlight and drag and drop that in there. And we can increase the exposure just so we can see what we're doing. And this is just a normal spotlight uh, that we can use to emphasize the subject of this render. All right, and let's turn on ray tracing. And let's go back to the camera. Right, so that's um, this is the shadow that the soft light or the the spotlight is producing. Of course, we can select that spotlight and change, let's say, the color, make it like green for whatever reason. Um, but I want to keep it simple and do like a warm um, yellowish, 
maybe something like that. Um, and also change this exposure. You can change all of that and change the follow and the angle and the radius. So if you want to change how sharp this shadow is, if you want something that's um, you know a bit more diffuse, all we have to do is change the radius of that emitter. So if you think about it, in a cloudy day uh, where you cannot see the sun, uh, the, the light is being diffused by the clouds, that's kind of like having a, a light bulb, you know, like a very big, broad um, light source. So that would be the equivalent to just pushing this radius something let's go for something extreme so you can see like 20 right so all that that shadow gets a bit more diffuse so you can play around with that i'm gonna go for maybe 15 and the follow that has to do with the with the actual cone of the of the spotlight maybe let's go out of the camera so that you can see what i'm doing so the angle if i move this out in and out it's kind of like changing obviously the or the focal angle yeah <laughs> the the size of that um of that spotlight and the follow is basically it's hard to see here so i'm just gonna i'm gonna go to streams so let's go for 50 right so you can see exactly what's happening uh the follow is going to change how sharp that edge towards the towards the spotlight is so 100 percent versus zero percent again it's hard to see but that's kind of like what it does um i'm gonna Keep it simple again. Let's go back to 15. That's that's working just fine. So it's just a little light, uh, a little extra light that helps to um, put emphasis on the subject. But the quality of render is fantastic. As you can see, you know, I haven't gone through all this, all the features and anything like that. But it's just it just works. <laughs> you just bring it in, turn on ray tracing, and you can adjust your um, your cameras and all of that. So let's go into the final camera. Let's call this one um, render one and i'm just double clicking those cameras to rename them render two um and we can do one more camera just to just for fun let's call this one render three and with this one we're just gonna find maybe a different angle maybe focusing on a i don't know like a close-up shot to these glasses that are pretty cool again it's just trying to find that that framing that kind of works all right something like that right now for each one of these cameras we can do something else we can enable depth of field and that's going to bring in the realism and that sort of photographic effect uh, for this type of setup so with this render 3 i'm going to go down to the bottom click on depth of field enable that and we can set the the focal point so i'm going to click on set focus point and i'm going to click on the edge of this glass so that's going to be my focal point everything else is going to be out of focus and we can change the blur amount which is yeah changing the angle uh, the the aperture of the camera in a way so i'm gonna add a bit of a, a bit of blur right so that's pretty cool let's go back to camera two again we can set the focal point if we enable that to be around there and let's do the same thing for camera one select camera one enable depth of fill all right so in this case it's not as obvious because we have a pretty flat perspective anyway um, but yeah, I think it just works. So I want to focus on maybe this one. All right. So now we have all the cameras. We have the we have the arrangement of the scene. Everything is working fine. All we have to do, all all we have left to do, really, is the actual rendering. So let's go ahead and go out of this camera. Turn off ray tracing because this ray tracing here, this this switch is just so that you can preview um, a more realistic version of what you're going to be rendering but the final render is done from this tabbing. So everything is working fine. Let's click on render. And in here, you can enable uh, the render with GPU, which in my case, I prefer to do. I have a um, an NVIDIA RTX 2080, so it's a lot faster than using the, the CPU. Um, you can also use the interactive ray tracing, but you know that's up to you. Uh, the presets, I'm gonna change these from medium to high so that all the noise and, and all of that from the from the preview that you saw before that's going to be gone um with a you know a preset of high quality but you can go for custom or ultra uh, as soon as you change the amount of samples and maximum time uh, that's kind of like customizing it but uh, i would recommend just to try the high and the medium and you'll see it's pretty decent and that's about it really we can set the resolution to full because that's the final render and here on the on the right hand side we can enable what are the renders that we're doing so i'm going to render everything so i'm going to render 
all the cameras really, but not the viewport camera, but the rest of the cameras um, are fine. We can override the camera size. So if you wanna double the size on, on this render, you can enable this and, and set it up here. But I think, you know, HD for these renders are pretty good. And I'm gonna go ahead and name this uh, pottery, pottery render, right? Uh, and the format, you can choose PNG, but I'm going to go for PSD. And if you select PSD, it actually going to create a color as a background layer, and you can change that in Photoshop quite easily. And that's it. Let's go ahead and render. I'm going to leave them in my desktop anyway. So I'm going to click on render, and just want to show you the process that is, is very, very quick. And you can use the middle mouse button to move things around while you render. Uh, but that's... That's pretty much it. So I'm gonna wait until the render is over and then I'm gonna come back and show you the final result. All right, and Stager just finished rendering the three images. You can see the status of the three renders completed. And as you can see uh, at a high quality preset with um, an HD render, it was about two minutes or two minutes and a half for each uh, one of these images. So it's a pretty decent, pretty decent result and the quality is amazing. So let's go ahead and open those up in Photoshop. And this is what you get as soon as you render. And like I said, if you render with PSD, you will get the actual image on its own. And then you have this background color. So we can go ahead and double click that and, you know, change it to a different, you know, lighter color or something like that. Right? So it's going to go for a darker, a darker tone just to add more contrast to it. Um, this is the second one that we rendered. And in this case, the background is pointless because there's no transparency. and Here's the other one with a nice kind of like depth of fill, very, very shallow depth of fill. So um, this is the, the one that I created before um, as I was testing these, this workshop. But you see, it's, it's a very, very simple process once you get the hang of it. Um, and if you want to just go from, you know, from scratch to build your own materials using 3D Sampler, it's just a matter of like finding the right references uh, to try to recreate the material that you want. In Substance Painter, you can go ahead and, and tweak it and, you know, further add, you know, details like I did with the, you know, with the chips of, or like the scratches of this material, as well as the variation in the roughness. Uh, all that good stuff that can be done within Substance 3D Painter. And once you're ready, you can just send all your assets to uh, stager and literally stage that <laughs> stage your your scene which is what i did uh for this uh, for these renders all right so that's it for this video and with this we also wrap up the mini workshop on the adobe 3d tools in action so hopefully the tools and the different tips and tricks that i share with you throughout these videos um, have been of help and if you have any comments or questions about a specific a step of this workflow feel free to put them in the comments of each video and i'll do my best to try to answer it i look forward to seeing your own version of this scene with your own custom materials and i'll see you in the next series